Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Could we see the first upgrade packs of FIFA 23 Ultimate Team today? I think there's a very high possibility of that happening. So we're going to talk about that today. And of course, all of the craziness with ones to watch. Renato Sanchez released with the mini release yesterday. He's not even on the market right now. Extinct at 450,000 coins. Kind of a crazy price. But it's a crazy player with a sick dynamic image. So I want to take a look at that and the big player of the month, Valverde SBC, that was dropped yesterday. A lot of people are on the fence this one. I think it's not the greatest of value, but you can make a case that it's decent. So we're going to talk through that. And of course, a potential investing method as the market continues to rise. Today, we should see some predictions released for the next up team of the week three. And I think that could create some more market movements that maybe we could profit on. But of course, some people have already bought into those. So we're going to talk about that in today's video as well. If you're excited for it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. Let's talk about Monday upgrade pack potential because Mondays have been the days in years past, especially a lot last year in FIBA 22, where we had upgrade packs and actually rolled back the calendar one year ago in the first week of FIFA 22, we had the first upgrade pack released, the 78 plus upgrade pack. It was very cheap to do. It was decent value. Now you might be like, Nate, we've already had an upgrade pack this year. And saying that you would be correct. The SBC has expired already, but we had that like early access upgrade where we had a 78 plus player. You could only do it once a day though for four days in a row. That to me is not a true upgrade pack. A true upgrade pack is unlimited repeatable. And that's what we had last year on this exact date, the first Monday of ones to watch. Now, could we have the 78 plus pack again, like we had just a couple of weeks ago or, or last week, basically? Yes, we could. But also in the code right now, there is an 80 plus rare gold player pack that has been added to the code amongst some other random ones that are in there. Could they already release an 80 plus pack? That's a possibility. I hope that it is either the 78 plus or the 80 plus, and I hope that it's just cheap. Like how we had these at 2000 coins, that's pretty nice because again, you, you have to release an upgrade pack that is worth doing, right? And right now in the early stages of the game, it's probably not worth to have an upgrade pack that would require like 11 rare golds and be, you know, six, 7,000 coins because that wouldn't make sense. People don't have a lot of coins and the players in packs are nice, of course, but a lot of people would be shying away from an SBC like that because of the cost. Basically what we need is an 80 plus upgrade that would be only requiring like six players because then you could take a look at it being better value than a gold upgrade SBC, which gives you two rare gold players, but you have to turn in 11 players to get it. So that's kind of the biggest piece of content that we have today. I know it's not really insane to get you know, like be excited about upgrade packs this early in the game because it's not that super you know cost effective or it's not really good club management to be sending a ton of coins into upgrade packs right now especially for ones to watch cards right because ones to watch cards yeah they're decent but think about how many ones to watch cards you used throughout the year last year you maybe used a couple right this kessie card might look pretty good after a couple weeks if he gets an upgrade for barcelona winning three games you know same thing with some of the other cards in the market you know holland this year of course you know maybe a renato sanchez some of these cards could look very, very good after a few upgrades. But for a lot of these cards, it's like, am I really going to be spending, you know, 50, 60, 70,000 coins on upgrade packs to try to pack one of these actually pretty difficult to pack ones to watch items? Uh, is it worth it to me to spend my coins in that way this early in the game? And it's really not. But I mean, a lot of people will have a lot of fun with these packs if they do get released. And it's at least an opportunity to do a couple of them for pretty cheap. Give a few a try and see if you hit anything good. But I would not rinse a lot of coins into those upgrade packs if they do come today. Now, also today on Monday, what else could we get? I mean, we do have another player of the month that we have not received yet. That is the um, Gakpo Eredivisie player of the month. We've had all three um, of the big three leagues that have been announced, Valverde, Kim Min Jae, and Rashford. I don't know if there's been a leak yet or an announcement yet for League 1 player of the month. I don't believe that I've seen anything around those lines. I know people have had whispered about Neymar, but I don't think there's an official release yet for that or a leak even. Um, so the potential for Gakpo coming at least maybe today or later on this week, I think is pretty high. And the only other leaked ones to watch SBC that we know of right now is the Raheem Sterling. And I believe that that's not even getting released until Thursday. So from now until Thursday, some question marks out there of what is going to be our content in the next couple of days. Now, one thing I would expect to see is as you look back on last year, and these are some of the SBCs from last year that we had in FIBA 22, you know, like we had the Holland transfer SBC yesterday, 
they did some of the same stuff exactly as they did last year. Hakimi's transfer, a newcomer's challenge. We had one of those two days ago in foot, right? You know, they did a, a Lukaku to Blues, a Wijnaldum to PSG, another newcomer's count challenge. That's probably going to be the most of the content this week. Maybe some upgrade packs today. Maybe a flashback player. We already have uh, Thiago Silva, so I wouldn't expect another one, but... Some of these little little pack SBCs, right, where they give you something to go and do. It's kind of like, you know, just filler content between, you know, some of the bigger days like a Friday promo day or a Sunday promo day like yesterday. So I don't expect that every day this week will be that big of content. And I think, honestly, what that bodes well for is the market. And that's what I want to continue to talk about is yesterday on Sunday with the releases of these once to watch cards and packs, we had a little bit of supply. But I think what we saw yesterday on the market is going to be pretty much how the market's going to last kind of throughout this whole week, honestly. Um, a lot of your gold cards continue to rise higher. Of course, Holland's price right now is going absolutely nuts after the insane game that City had yesterday and that he had with three goals and two assists. There's literally no shot that they snub Holland from Team of the Week. I, people would be up in arms if Holland did not get into Team of the Week this week. Of course, it would mean a potential upgrade and an, and an upgrade, not a potential upgrade, but a legit upgrade to his ones to watch card, which is exploding in price once again. It was like 1.3 mil before the game. It went all the way up to like 1.7, 1.8. Right now, he's at 1.6. I would expect this ones to watch card keeps rising up closer and closer as we get into like Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, the big thing that's going to impact these cards every single week, and we have to start to remember this, is Team of the Week leaks are very real. And I believe it's it might even be as late as like, you know, late tonight on Monday and into tomorrow on Tuesday. We could see our first Team of the Week leaks, but for sure on Tuesday, we'll start to get some info on the Team of the Week leaks. And that was one of the things that on the, on the market that I wanted to talk about is some people are already starting to speculate about what cards could be in the Team of the Week. Since we've seen so many cards rise up and do well, this is something that happens every year in FIFA, especially in the early weeks as people are excited for brand new Team of the Week cards. Players that are going out of packs because they're about to get a Team of the Week always go up in price in terms of investing. Take a look at Ben Yedder. Ben Yedder scored, I believe it was either two goals or a hat trick yesterday for Monaco in a win. And this man is up at 24,000 coins. He was 18K before he scored those goals yesterday on Sunday. As you can see, he was 18,000 coins, spiked up to 23, had a bit of a dip down to 22, and was all the way up to 25. Actually, where he is right now, about 24, 25,000 coins. This is a card that is being invested in for the potential of getting a team of the week on Wednesday. Same thing with Holland, if I'm being completely honest, right? Holland, of course, if he would go out of packs for a team of the week, would mean that his gold card would be out of packs for another few more days, another five days, actually, uh, the difference from Friday to next Wednesday if his team of the week card would come into packs on Wednesday. And some people might be like, Nate, is it even possible for this guy to get an inform? Absolutely it is. His ones to watch card would go out of packs for the last two days, making it even more rare. And the inform card would come into packs on Wednesday. So yes, there absolutely is potential for that to happen. It's happened in the past before, I do believe. Um, EA seem reluctant to give early upgrades to ones to watch cards, but in this case, I think they have to. And if they don't, they're going to hear about it big time. So that's why this Holland card is going up. He might even go extinct at 350 if he's going to be out of packs. That's why people are investing in him. But specifically, the Ben Yedder uh, situation that's going on here is because he scored really good. He had a really good game, scored goals, and is starting to go up. If Team of the Week predictions start to come out, and usually what I do is I look on the front page of Flippin, they will post Team of the Week predictions pretty early. Today on Monday, I believe, they're pretty good about getting them out pretty fast. And you will see the market react to those Team of the Week predictions if Ben Yedder, and I would assume that he would be in those predictions, of course, is shown in them, you would see this card probably continue to rise up even further. And I'm not saying that right now is a really good opportunity to go and buy him since he's already up 6,000 coins a card. But what I'm saying is just watch his price. If you have an opportunity to snag one on a bid at like 22,000 coins or maybe even a card that's that may be in team of the week uh, that gets into predictions that isn't up in price at all yet, just think about somebody who maybe had a decent game this weekend or especially this happens for defenders where maybe their team keeps a clean sheet and they didn't score a goal. Maybe they had an assist. Sometimes that's enough for EA to put a card in team of the week. And of course, as we know, sometimes players don't even have to do like anything to get in team of the week. I remember one Mertens card last year where Mertens got a team of the week for literally doing nothing 
but he got a team of the week card. We looked back, we're like, he didn't even like have an assist or a goal and they won, but like he didn't do anything. And then he got a team of the week, right? There's definitely some shady stuff that goes on there. So all I'm saying is watch the FootWiz predictions, watch predictions on Twitter. Just literally go to Twitter and type in team of the week three prediction today on Monday at some point and look and see what kind of cards are in there. See if their gold cards have started to move up on the market all or not. And if they haven't, that could be an opportunity to make some coins because again, especially for like the footbin predictions, a lot of people are going to see those. A lot of people are going to be looking at the front page of footbin and seeing those. And that could impact players prices on the market as we get towards the time where those golds would go out of pack. So that's something I want to talk about today because, you know, I think a lot of people are looking for investments right now, especially as people have sold cards off. And as the market continues to go higher in other areas, people are maybe selling cards where they have coins at the ready um, and they want to invest, right? We just came out of a period where so many people were investing in cards. We saw the market explode from the web app period to the early access. Now prices are going up again from after the launch on Friday into this week as more people get coins and upgrade their teams. Like we talked about in yesterday's video, I think people are hungry for investments and there is definitely the, the, the potential for overinvestment on some of these gold cards that would go out of packs that could be in team of the week. So again, there's a bit of some risk involved there, but a lot of times you can make profit in that sort of investment method. So speaking of the market that is continuing to go up, a lot of cards continued to rise yesterday. I'm taking a look at some of these team of the week two informs that of course people know are pretty rare. They definitely had their lowest prices on Friday, right? When we had all the pack supply and all the craziness of Friday, but a lot of these cards look like they're continuing to go up, right? Akanji was low 60s. Now he's creeping up into the higher 60s. Uh, if I take a look at uh, some other team of the week cards on Footbin, you know, we've got Salah, who's 470 right now. Of course, this is the late night, so cards have kind of crept upwards regardless. Marquinhos is one who's really gone up in price in the past day. Take a look at Sunday morning. He was 182, even around content yesterday on Sunday, 183. Now almost 200,000 coins after even being on Saturday, like 167 at his lowest point. So Marquinhos starting to rise. Um, Madrid starting to rise with the Real Madrid hype after the Valverde SBC yesterday, for sure. Havertz is up a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, we talked about some of the, the Mimetta cards that are up. You know, this is definitely a time where if you have, a, like, I would say if you have over 300,000 coins, maybe it's worth going in here and, like, club stocking a Raspadori at discard if you can get him there, um, an Orban at discard if you can get in there, a center back from the Bundesliga. That could provide some good links. Giroud, where I'm, I'm starting to just, the first evidences of maybe buying one of these put it in a club as low price as possible um, just to stock the club with a few informs that could rise up later but that'd be only if you're in a higher tier budget and um, if you you know have some coins to, to put into something like that uh, but for the rest of the market like I said with the Valverde SBC dropping yesterday a lot of those Real Madrid cards continue to go up I just looked at Benzema, Ferlin Mendy, a lot of these La Liga guys and Real Madrid specifically have continued to rise up in price. Verlin Mendy is like over 100,000 coins now. And it's because, you know, let's talk about this Valverde SBC for a second because maybe if upgrade packs come out today, you can craft it for a little bit cheaper and maybe it's slightly better value if that's the case. But I'm in the ballpark that this Betty Valverde is it's just, it's not that great for the price. I mean, I made coins flipping the Valverde in form yesterday after right away when that SBC was dropped, we literally sprinted to the market, bought three Valverdes at 120,000 coins. I actually bought, ended up buying one later too and selling it for 140 again. Um, but he was 120, he spiked up to like 145, went back down to 120, and I believe now he's back up into like the 130s and 140s. And the reason why his card price went up right away is because we saw the requirements on this Valverde and we were like, man, that's just a little bit too much, right? The 87 rated squad at the end is what putting is what putting people off on, on this, I think. But also, I think people are doing it because it's Real Madrid and because it is a center mid position change. And even though it's the same stats as the inform, if you take a look at Footbin, you take a look at this card, it's got a decent amount of upvotes, right? It's kind of a split thumbs up to thumbs down. There was a lot more thumbs up uh, before, like in the first, honestly, like hour or so. This SPC was thumbs up a lot, which meant there was a lot of hype there. His, you know, up, up down on the SPC is now at 50-50 as well. But at, right away, it was a lot of thumbs up. And you can actually tell that 
people are doing this SBC, if you take a look at fodder, look at some of your higher rated cards, right? Your higher tier fodder moved up the most from this SBC because in that 87 squad, it required two players that were 88 or above. Specifically, you look at some of the eight, the cheapest 88s, Tony Cruz going from 19,000 coins all the way to 26K. Not super usable in game, mostly a fodder card. That's why he's going up. I mean, take a look at like Bernardo Silva. That's not a good example, actually. Where's Ruben Diaz? 25,000 coins for Ruben Diaz. You know, again, basically a fodder card as well. Going from 19,000 coins and spiking to 25K after Valverde was released. So again, people are doing this Valverde, but I think it's more of the Real Madrid hype that is pushing people to go and get this SBC done. It's not more so the good value aspect of it. If, if I had to choose, and I, this is the way that I'm looking at it right now, yes, Valverde is a card that you could use in your team as a midfielder for a long time. And yes, he is out for 30 days. So I like that aspect of it. You could absolutely get this SBC done for less than 220,000 coins um, with upgrade packs or with fodder that you have. Um, if you haven't done the advanced SBCs yet or, or after a couple weeks of rivals rewards, like you could get this done and definitely slowly craft it into your team. I don't hate that at all. But the way that I'm looking at it is right now we have this Cassie SBC that's also available that I'm in the middle of doing. It's basically less than half of the price. And, you know, he's not an 86 rated card yet. And of course, he does not have as much pace as Fede Valverde. Fede Valverde is more of a box to box than this card is more purely of a, of a CDM and maybe even a center back in game if you wanted him to be. But basically in what do we calculate on stream like two weeks and 14 days from now, Barcelona should have achieved two more wins with that third win potentially being El Clasico or they play another game like four days after that against Villarreal, which they could very easily get their third win as well um in in the process so we're basically like 14 to 18 days away from this kessie card going to an 86 and looking incredibly better for less than half of the price still a dynamic image still a live upgrading card that could get more upgrades if kessie were to somehow score a goal maybe get an in for him something like that not that you would expect it but that's kind of the thought process that i'm going here with right a great card already definitely not you know a one-to-one -one comparison with Valverde, but I just like the price of Kessie. Uh, so, you know, the Real Madrid links though with Valverde are super duper nice. The Barcelona links with Kessie are super duper nice. So all I would say is just be careful with your coins. If, if Valverde is a card for you that you're going to end up using your team until like team of the year, which I think he absolutely has the potential to be usable until team of the year, then maybe it's something you grind for and you craft for. If you're a Real Madrid fan, I'm not going to tell you to not do the SBC if it's a card that, of course, you're a fan of the club that he plays for, so you want to get that guy in your team. So I, I don't hate that at all, but I just think that even with the same stats, if you can handle the right wing position change as well in whatever squad buildup you're running, this guy can obviously go to right mid as well. I would just buy this inform card for the same stats and you, it's still tradable. I mean, you can sell it at some point and it's, you know, still like a hundred K cheaper than the SBC. So that's kind of where I'm at with the Valverde SBC. I just think it was a little bit expensive, but I understand why EA did it. It's a player of the month and it is a, it is position change and it is a Real Madrid card. So they can get a little bit of extra hype there. I think from a lot of people on this game. So that's just kind of things to notice, right? That, that's something that you'll pick up on if you haven't already about the market on this game is that a lot of times EA can, you know, on these big team players, especially if it's early in the game or if it's a point where they don't want to crash the market, same thing with Rashford, right? They didn't make Rashford's upgrade that big and his value wasn't that insane. People are still doing it, right? Same thing with Thiago Silva, same thing with Valverde. They're not trying to make everybody go and do these cards. They're pricing at a point where only some people are going to do it and they know that. So interesting to see where they do, where they go and the direction that they head with the pricing on some of these SPCs and all that stuff. But Taking a look at some ones to watch cards as well on the market for a bit here at the end of the video. Of course, we talked about Erling Holland. He's going up like mad. Uh, some of these other cards still have potential to get in team of the week. Um, not Anthony as I'm typing him in right now, but Anthony had a pretty good price fluctuation yesterday. After the United City game, he went down to like 210K. He's now bouncing back up kind of to about 230, 235-ish. Kind of the same situation as we saw with Gabriel Jesus um, after the uh, Derby on Saturday morning. And then of course we have to talk about this Renato Sanchez. Now here are my thoughts on this. This Renato card, in my opinion, 
is worth more than 450,000 coins right now. And the only reason I'm saying right now is because this card was in a mini release on a Sunday. And of course, the Sunday mini release cards, as we saw all of last year, are uber rare. They are super duper duper rare. And these cards obviously maintain a little bit of a higher price tag because they didn't have that Friday promo pack supply when everybody is on the game ripping packs for the new promo team, right? So that's why I think that Renato is kind of like, it's kind of okay that he's 450,000 coins. I know there's a lot of people that are trying to invest and trying to snipe that card because basically what's priced into the Renato is a, a plus a plus three upgrade right off of the bat, right? He's uh, he's an 80 rated card. So 80s go to 83s after one in form and the potential for him, for PSG to win two more games in the near future, I would say is pretty high. And that would take this card to an 83 rated card just like this. So that kind of upgrade since he plays for PSG is already priced in. He plays for Portugal. They should very easily be able to win one game against Ghana or South Korea or Uruguay, I think is in their World Cup group. So they should be able to win one of those games and get an additional upgrade, which would take it from an 83 to an 85. So in the course of the next, let's say, basically month, right? World Cup starts in like 50 days or something like that. In the course of the next 50 days or in the course of the next two weeks, he should be able to go to an 83 rated card. And then after that, he would have the potential to go to an 85. And of course, if he would score a goal or have potential for an inform, the unlikely chance because he doesn't play that much, he could, of course, go to an 80 what would that be an 87 right oh if he went from 85 to go to yeah 87 i think right um or 86 that that'd be crazy that would absolutely be crazy um if all three of those upgrades happen but at least for the two upgrades then you look at this card after getting a plus five rating and you're like goodness gracious that would be worth 450,000 coins still as a live card so I know that it's just rare right now. This price range is going to update hopefully pretty soon. If you have this card, I would take the liberty and try to take the coins on it right after the price range updates. That's the safest plan because if you keep your coins liquid, you can keep trading and keep investing and making coins all at the same time. Um, but that's why that price is where it is. Bergwine, the brand new card from yesterday, super duper cheap, um, which is you know probably where he should be, two-star weak foot and playing in a not as popular league. Sick dynamic image, of course, for Bergwijn, right? So also interesting position changes. If Gakpo comes out, you could use Gakpo and Bergwijn in the same team. Just something to kind of notice. And then Delict as well. I don't think Delict is worth 120 or 130,000 coins technically as well. But again, it's kind of the same thing as Renato. He's got the Bayern Munich kind of uh, potential upgrades already priced in because you would expect Bayern Munich to hopefully get three wins pretty fast, although their, their uh, luck this year in the Bundesliga hasn't been as superb. Um, and just a reminder, once again, that only league matches, none of the Champions League or uh, matches that happen during this midweek time frame count unless they are league matches. So make sure you kind of remember that. And speaking of Bayern Munich, former Bayern Munich striker Lewandowski, keep an eye on him today because he might start showing up in some team league predictions. We were watching him last night. He went down to like 310, 320. Uh, yesterday on Sunday, he's back up now into the 340 range. He could even go higher today because I think he's going to make it into a few people's team league predictions. So we're going to have to watch out for that as well today. But really the big news for today is will there be upgrade packs? And we're just going to continue to keep watch the market, watching the market rise as we get closer and closer to the big point of demand this next upcoming weekend where a lot of people are going to be building teams and continue to build teams over this next week for the big weekend league competition. So if you enjoyed today's video, smash the thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate the Foot Account and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.